Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here from Moss Pawn and Gun. You guys may have recalled the video that we did with the AR upper and lower build. Um, we, we did two sections where we talked about uh, assembling each of those components. Uh, you know, Ray uh, handled that gunsmithing video for us. Uh, we're out to actually test that rig at the range today. We've got our complete uh, lower that we finished up, our upper. Uh, I'll quickly go over the components that we used uh, for this particular build. We've got a very nice ATI four end. We got an ATI grip and furniture set. We're running a uh, Vortex Viper PST, two and a half to 10 power. It's a first focal plane optic with an illuminated reticle and a side parallax adjustment. It's sitting in a LaRue mount. Uh, we are running a Geisley designated marksman trigger. Very, very nice trigger. It's fully adjustable. It's one of those types of triggers that comes from the factory with the preset and then you can make fine tuning adjustments to it to get it exactly like you want. It's a very nice two-stage trigger that I think is gonna lend itself very well for hunting purposes. Uh, this is the BCM Gunfighter um, charging handle, okay? We're using Anderson upper and lower and 2545 Sharps barrel, okay? We're running Geisley gas block, um, now the 2545 Sharps is a kind of a, a new idea. Basically it's a 223 piece of brass that's necked up to 25 caliber. So out of a 20 inch barrel, they're touting that you can get a 87 grain pill moving at around 3000 feet per second. So this also accomplishes a few things. One, in certain states, ARs aren't legal to hunt with because of the bullet diameter, okay? So this allows you by, by kind of trumping the 22 caliber bullet um, a little bit and moving up to a 25, it then makes ARs pretty much legal to hunt with in any state that requires a bullet larger than a 22 caliber uh, size projectile. Uh, and also it just gives a, a greater edge of performance. You know, it's supposed to be a very hard hitting caliber. Um, we were doing some preliminary accuracy work with the gun earlier and uh, the groups not too bad, um, but we are gonna shoot some more groups uh, with it on camera here for you today. And uh, we were zapping our little 250 yard gopher with boring regularity. So um, I see the rifle as lending itself very well to predator hunting, uh, gophers, groundhogs, little guys like that, uh, deer hunting, of course, with proper shot placement. Uh, it's certainly gonna take down a deer and uh, it's just meant to be a good solid hunting rig. So let's group the gun a little bit, um, see how well it works. So far, not doing too bad. All right, guys, we're gonna proceed to shoot a couple of groups for you. I'm gonna fire two. Chat will fire two, and we're gonna shoot some various targets for you. I'm just trying to get an idea of the preliminary accuracy that we can expect out of the rig. You know, anytime you take a new build out, that's kind of what you're looking to do. Get an idea where you can improve, things you might need to change, whatever. Um, by the way, I didn't mention, but we are using Sharps Rifle Company ammunition, 2545, 87 grain soft point. Well, let's run it. The recoil impulse on this rifle is slightly heavier than 5.56. I mean, you're going to get a little bit more recoil, but it's uh, pretty much nothing to cry about unless you just like doing that kind of thing, in which uh, case, feel free to cry. All right, well that first group's not too bad. It looks like that fell into about a minute and a half. Um, for hunting ammunition and a hunting rifle, that's not bad. Let's shoot some more groups and see if those groups tighten up. You know, again, it is a fresh build, so I've probably got less than 40 rounds through it at this point, so it probably needs to be broken in a bit. Barrel get fouled in. You wanna get a good uh, coating of copper fouling in the barrel so it, it kind of gets into a bit of a rhythm harmonically. Um, so let's shoot another group. That's not shabby. Hopefully uh, we can improve on that. So it's falling right into about a minute. Yeah, not bad. Was that five? That was five. Okay. That's not too bad at all. Um, you know, again, when you're doing preliminary accuracy testing, the whole point is just to get an idea of what the gun can do for you. And uh, for one, to see if the accuracy is something you're happy with moving forward. 
and also to see if there's any issues with the build. Uh, you always want to take a rig out, do some good quality testing through it, especially before you shoot at a little critter or something like that. So, uh, which we're going to do here in a minute. Not a live critter, but a little steel critter. So, uh, Chad's going to fire a few groups. Let's just make sure we're getting consistent results and uh, we'll move along with our video here. All right, guys, I'm going to shoot a couple of groups with the little rig here and 2545 sharps and uh, see what we can do just to you know, make sure that the rifle's shooting consistently for Eric and myself. And then we're going to showcase the uh, practical accuracy on some steel out to about 300 yards. So let's shoot a couple of groups and see what we can do here. Well, you got one really nice uh, triangulation there, but you had a couple of extreme flyers. I wonder if that maybe is just the, the build kind of fouling in a little bit. I don't know. Um, still about a minute or so? or it No, up? it's way, way bigger than a minute. Yeah, Why don't you try another group? And, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe we're just getting some, some fouling going on. It's hard to say. Let's I mean, those first two groups there. I printed weren't too shabby. Yeah. And bear in mind, guys, we're talking about inherent accuracy potential right out of the box. So... You know, gives you a little bit to go on. You can work up some hand loads, some higher quality ammunition, make some minor tweaks. This is just a test run. <clears throat> yeah, definitely a minute of Bambi. <laughs> well, yeah, those would all be Bambi headshots. All right, that's about where it should be printing. Oh, yeah. Got a little bit of wind, but shouldn't make a lot of difference at 100 yards. No, it shouldn't. Probably got about a 10 or 12 mile an hour crosswind. Oh, yeah. What are we working with there? Well, you had some horizontal stringing bringing the groups into about roughly an inch and a half, and you had a high flyer, it brought it out to two. Wow. Yeah. That's odd. I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me shoot one more group with the rifle there in the center just to see if it replicates what's happening to you, if it does it for me, and then uh, we'll proceed to, to shoot at some stuff because it seems like it's sighted in pretty decent. Maybe I'm just having an off day. Chad, have an off day? No way. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we saw that Chad's groups there replicated mine pretty close. Um, you know, we got an idea what kind of accuracy potential we can expect, but just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and shoot one more group in the center there and that way, if I replicate all of the results from earlier, we'll know that the rig is shooting about as consistent as it's gonna shoot for us today. So let's go ahead and give her a try. Yep, about the same. About the same. Mm, about okay. a minute and a quarter. About a minute and a quarter. So guys, we're running soft point, hunting ammunition, about minute and a quarter to minute and a half accuracy. Certainly not shabby. Gives a lot of room for improvement there with hand loads. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plink a couple of pieces of steel here at various ranges. We'll get set up for that now. All right, guys, 87 grain soft points, 25, 45 sharps. Gonna do a little bit of playing on the steel here out to about 300 yards. I think this rifle is going to be a lot of fun to do some hand loading with in the future. Um, I think I've got a few things in, in mind for that. Um, they do cut reloading dies for this caliber, so obviously save all your brass. Excellent little hand loader's tool, in case you guys don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take that. Oh, oh, just left. Had a good string going. I'll tell you what, we got his, his little go for a keeper back there at the 250 yard mark. I'm gonna see if I can get a, land a nice uh, solid headshot on him. Just to the right. Favorite really? little left. The wind catch it? Yep. There you go. Right in, in the that? jugular. Huh? Right in the jugular. 
Oh yeah, there you go. Just right. Just left. Not too bad. Not too All shabby. Right, let's see if we can uh, post a couple of shots on the little auto pupper over here to the right at 300. All right, we got our mag topped off. We're gonna take a couple of shots at the uh, auto popper there at 300 yards. See how well we can sling them in there for us here. Um, little 87 grain peel getting out there pretty quick. You saw the shots on the gopher. It seems to connect very rapidly and violently. So always a good thing. Let's give her a try on the little auto popper. It's a six inch circle at 300 yards. Good shot. Yep. 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 Just high. Just high? Just high. 10 4. Same place. Stringing around a little bit. Just yeah, left. Yeah, see that. Just left. There you go. Putting them in there. Just left. Wearing it out. <laughs> Just right. Just right. Low right. There you go. Low right. Wow. It puts them in there, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> a few of them are kind of stringing around a little yeah, bit, but I mean, for the most part. A little bit of stringing, but I tell you what, if you're shooting at little groundhogs or little critters or coyotes, that's certainly good enough accuracy uh, for small critter work. Um, you know, even the misses weren't missing by much. I mean, a lot of those misses might have been hitting slightly uh, low or right, maybe just by an inch or so. So not bad, and I certainly wasn't taking my time. I mean, I was shooting relatively quickly there. So uh, we're gonna get Chad behind the gun here and uh, do a little bit more planking. But so far, um, little rig's running really nice. Uh, Vortex scope is, of course, beautiful, very clear optics. Rail's holding together, trigger's doing great. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention earlier that I do want to talk about quickly uh, before we let Chad get on the gun here is the Reliable Bolt Carrier Group from Sharps. Uh, that's another rig that we're running uh, with this particular setup here and very, very high quality. It's, it's very smooth from what I can tell, you know, just the way the locking lugs are a lot lower profile. So it just really rotates into place nice and smooth and uh, not a whole lot of carrier tilt. You know, you're not going to get a lot of that going on. So I really am digging the Bolt Carrier Group. And I think pretty much every rig that I run from now on, I'm going to try to run those little Sharps bolt carrier groups. So, uh, so far, so good. I'm liking the little rig. Um, I can't wait to slam a whitetail with this thing this year. Uh, I think that that 87 grain pill will certainly do really well, especially with some of the offerings we're going to be trying out of the gun in the near future. Hopefully, uh, I may not be able to film it, but we will do a uh, couple of deer kills. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. It's Iraq Veteran 8888 Official on Facebook. And uh, we'll post uh, pictures of the deer kill if we happen to, to shoot any animals with this rig this year. So, uh, Chad, why don't you have a go here, man? This thing's a blast to shoot. All right, well, I'm going to plink with the uh, rifle a little bit here. I'm going to engage some targets from about 175 yards on out to 300 yards. We've got various uh, steel out there from shootsteel.com. Um, we're going to be running our Vortex target cam, which is uh, basically it's a DSLR adapter on their 20 to 60 by 85 millimeter spotting scope. And I've got it focused on the 300 yard berm out there. So hopefully we'll be able to catch a few of those bullet trails going in there at longer range. Really see what this round's doing. All right, let's take a few shots here. I'll take down those two uh, poppers down there first, about maybe 200 yards away. Send it. Good. 
Got him. Okay. Huh. Easy pickings. Tango right. down, boy. 175 <laughs> yards. <laughs> Tango down. <laughs> All right, about 175 yards, D28. Oh, yeah. All You're right, on child's it. play at 175. Oh, right. I know. Let's go for our little gopher. Our little four-legged friend. Let's go for the gopher. No pun intended. <laughs> Nailed him. Just over the right side of his nose there. Just over the left shoulder. Okay. <clears throat> little low, but dead on the money. Good. Over to the right. To the right. You're hitting uh, to the right. Good. You got him. You're hitting a little low. Missed to the left. Good. T taking his feet out. Just to the left by an inch. Good. Dead center. Center mass. Good. A little low, but center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wind's kind of picking up a little bit here and there. You know, guys, remember that these are soft points, and this is factory loaded ammunition, so it's made to work in a variety of different uh, types of firearms for the most part. And it's soft point, of course, so it's made to be a hunting round. Not meant to be superbly accurate, but just accurate enough. I mean, as you can see from the groupings, I mean, just over a minute. And that's plenty accurate for, for hunting purposes. And you can see the practical accuracy on the steel out to, you know, 250 yards and um, 300 yards out there like Eric was shooting earlier. Um, you know, it's really laying them in there. So get this mag topped off here. Good shot. All right, you missed to the left by an inch. Dead center, good shot. You're on it. Oh man, you're on it. You're shooting about a three and a half inch group. That went right over the top by an inch. Same spot. A little bit low. High and right. To the left. Same spot. Hit to the right about two inches. High, an inch. Weird. Wind must be picking that round up just a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, try bringing your hold down a bit. You're favoring a little more high than not. Good shot. Right in the center. Missed to the right by an inch. Missed to the left by an inch. Good. You're favoring the left edge of the plate. Good shot. Yep, you're putting them in there. Good shot, right on the top. Right in the center, good shot. Yep. A little low. Good, right in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're shooting them into about a three and a half inch group at that rate. A little high, but right in there. Not bad. Not too shabby. No, not at all. Well, gun's getting a little warm. <laughs> Put a lot of rounds through it. Then we're gonna pull this bolt carrier group out. Like Eric mentioned, it's a sharp rifle company. They're reliable. It's actually nickel coated. It's like an MP3 type coating. We're gonna take it out and see how easy it is to clean. So let's do that right quick. All right, guys, we're gonna check out this bolt carrier group that Chad mentioned. I don't know how I got selected to have to do this, but that's okay. I do wanna look at it to see how dirty it's gotten. Ooh, yeah, and uh, the little puppy's a little skanky here. So, all right, let's pull this thing apart. And uh, I've got one of my little LPS-1 weapons wipes. Uh, these things are great. And if you guys don't know about LPS-1, you need to check it out. It's a really cool product. Let's just uh, pull this little guy apart and see how well this uh, MP3 type coating works on this thing. All right, so there's our firing pin. 
cam pin. Okay, that all comes apart just fine. So let's just uh, see if we can wipe her down a little bit here. You know, the whole charm of having a coating like that on a bolt carrier group is that it's supposed to make everything wiped down real easily with just a little bit of basic elbow grease and you're not really supposed to have to break out uh, too much in terms of aggressive cleaning uh, solvents or anything like that. So it's like the little bolt group is cleaning up just fine. But that's what I wanted to see. You know, I've, I've always heard about, uh, you know, those types of coatings. And of course, it's not meant to supplement a full cleaning. This is just like a quick and dirty type cleaning that you can do while you're out at the range. And especially while a lot of this crap that gets onto the actual uh, carrier, you know, before it starts to get really like hard and caked onto the, to the gun, this lets you kind of cheat it real quick and, and try to get some of the loose crap off of the bolt carrier group. So, I mean, you see that a lot of this stuff came off relatively easy. Now, of course, it's not going to supplement an entire cleaning, but that's one thing I just wanted to check out while while we had the, the thing here. I just wanted to wipe it down a little bit. And plus, just to see how dirty the system runs in general in the, the different caliber. You know, that's something I was curious about. Uh, but guys, I appreciate you watching today's video. Um, we always have a lot of fun making these videos. Um, we always come up with all kinds of interesting things to talk about and do. Um, I can certainly see where this rifle would be an excellent hunting rifle moving forward. So that's something we probably will uh, get after in the near future, try to do a little bit of hunting. Uh, probably won't film any of it, but again, we will try to get to it. Well guys, I appreciate you watching today's video. If you didn't know about 2545 Sharps, maybe now you have a little bit better idea about you know, how the caliber works and the platform it's designed to run in. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll do more work with this caliber and this rifle later. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Have a good one.